Hi, welcome to CG Dive. In this video, I'll show a workflow for getting generic rigged characters from Blender to Unity. If you want to get early access to these videos, you can become a patron or buy the series on Gumroad. Links will be in the video description. So right away, let's establish what we are going to cover here. That can also help you decide if this video is worth your time. As I said, I'll be covering using a generic skeleton in Unity, which will allow us to control diverse characters rather than uh, just humans. Unity has two main animation types, humanoid and generic. The humanoid offers a bunch of useful features for retargeting, reusing animations, etc. As long as your character has a humanoid skeleton that complies with certain technical requirements. The generic one, on the other hand, can handle any skeleton structure, but it doesn't offer any special features. I know many of you are interested in the humanoid system in Unity, and I'm going to cover it in a separate video, because your Blender rig needs special preparation to ensure that it is compatible with the humanoid. Also, I've been going through a lot of Unity tutorials lately, and most of them seem to work with the humanoid. So I think covering the generic workflow will be useful to some of you. While 90% of the characters are indeed human-like, I think that the remaining 10% of horses, dragons and dogs also deserve some love. Another topic that we'll leave for another video is root motion. So we'll animate our characters walking and running in place and then we'll make them move in space using a Unity script. Speaking of scripts, I did make a basic script that will make our generic character run, jump, duck and so on in Unity. But it is pretty basic. The main goal of this video is to show how to prepare a rigged character for export to Unity and then the work we'll do in Unity will demonstrate that our character was exported correctly. And finally, this is a bit of an overview video. I've been covering the process of making game ready rigs for the last couple of months and I released a bunch of videos about that. We even released an add-on that automates the workflows that I showed and I'm going to use this add-on in this video as well. So if any part of this overview doesn't make sense, I'd recommend that you go through this playlist and familiarize yourself with the processes, get the add-on and then you'll be in good shape to work with Blender and game engines. Okay, for the first example, I'm going to use this character that I got from Mixamo, and I'm going to quickly rig it using Rigify. In my Blender to Unreal tutorial, I showed how you can download a Mixamo character and remove the Mixamo armature so that you can rig this character yourself with a more complex rig. And yes, this character is humanoid, but again, we are going to treat it as a generic skeleton. So I'm going to quickly rig this character with Rigify, and I've done this many, many times on this channel, so I'll go a little bit faster. And if you want to learn about Rigify, you can watch my series about it. So I have Rigify enabled. I'm going to press Shift A and create a basic, basic human. Enable X-Ray so that I can see it better. And in object mode, I'm going to scale the whole rig a little bit so that it matches my character. And that will produce uh, an applied scale. This is something that I try to emphasize in every video, but always work with applied scale. So in this case, I have to press Ctrl A and choose scale. And my scale will be set to 111. Next, I'll go to edit mode and start aligning these bones. Let's turn on X axis mirror so that we only need to align one side of the rig. First, I'm going to simplify this rig a little bit. I'm going to delete these pelvis bones, the breast bones, and also, I'm going to go to the neck, which consists of two bones. I'm going to select this connection between the two neck bones and press Ctrl X, and that will create just one neck bone. Next, I'll start aligning the legs. When working with the Rigify Meta Rig, always bend the knee very, very slightly so that Rigify can figure out which way the knee is supposed to bend. This heel bone, you should place at the heel and make it as wide as the foot. What I just said about the knee applies to the elbow as well. Give it a little bit of a bending so that Rigify can figure out how to bend the arm. Do not disconnect the neck and the spine. Instead, box select over this area and move these bone ends as one. If you've watched my Rigify tutorials, you know why. If you don't do this, you'll get an error.
Also note that this character has fingers, but I'm not going to bother rigging them. Rigging fingers can be very time consuming, but it won't contribute to your understanding of this Blender to Unity workflow that I'm trying to demonstrate. So now I'm happy with my meta rig and in object mode, I'm going to go to the armature tab and find the generate rig button and press it. Let's hide the meta rig, select the character, shift select the generated rig, press control P and choose with automatic weights. And now the character is parented and weighted to this control rig. Automatic weights do not produce perfect results, but it will do for this presentation. So the generated rig will be my control rig, so I'm going to name it control rig. And clear all transforms to bring the character in the default position. The next step will be to create our game rig. Until recently, I was doing this step manually by duplicating the control rig, cleaning it up, and constraining it to the control rig. However, a week ago we released our new add-on, Game Rig Tools, which does all of this automatically. You can learn all about Game Rig Tools from the links that I'll share with you. But once you have Game Rig Tools, you can go to the add-on, select the control rig, click the Generate the Form Rig button. I'm going to name my Game Rig Crypto Rig. Crypto is the name of this character that I'm rigging and I'll leave these options to default. The add-on has a lot of options and I explain all of them in the videos that you'll find when you download the add-on itself. But these defaults will work great for a generic Unity armature. And with just one click, the add-on extracted a game armature for us. It also cleaned up the armature from any unwanted data. And if I go to pose mode, you'll see that all of these game bones are constrained. They are constrained to the control armature. Here you can see that the target of all of these constraints is the control rig. And another thing that happened is that the add-on reparented our character from the control rig to the game rig. And also it changed the object of the armature to the game rig. So now the character is moved by the game rig and the game rig is controlled by the control rig. And that is the CG dive approach to game ready rigs. There is only one step that we cannot really automate with this add-on and that is setting up the hierarchy of the game bones. Usually when you extract the game bones from the control armature, they are not in a perfect hierarchy. That is actually one of the main reasons why we extract this game armature in the first place, because it allows us to create pretty much any hierarchy that we want. So I need to go to my game rig and one of the simplest way to test your hierarchy is to simply go to pose mode and try to rotate the bones and see if they are connected in a logical way. If I try to rotate any of the bones now, they won't move. That is because they're currently constrained. So I want to temporarily disable the constraints. I can do that with the mute constraints button from game rig tools. And now the bones can be freely rotated. Okay, for example, I can clearly see that the clavicle is not connected to the spine. I've done this many times with a rigify rig. I know that I need to parent the clavicle to the chest, arms to clavicle and legs to the beginning of the spine. I'm going to enable x-axis mirror here, parent the clavicle to the chest, arm to clavicle, always with keep offset and leg to spine. And that's it. Now my character is in a logical hierarchy. And before I move on, I will want to unmute the constraints. Unmuting the constraints will re-establish the connection between the game rig and the control rig, which we'll need for the next step. The next step is to animate the control rig and then to bake these actions to the game rig. And then our character will be ready for export. For baking, we have a special section of game rig tools the Action Bakery, which I'll demonstrate in a second. So now we need to create animations for this control rig. In the Blender to Unreal workflow videos, I made a special video where I showed how I create a bunch of animations like a walk, run, idle, crouching, and so on. Feel free to take a look at this video. And because in that video, I use the same type of Rigify armature, I can reuse these animations so I can append them. I'm going to go to File, Append, find the file that contained these animations. 
and select all of them and click append. So now these animations are in my blend file. I just haven't applied them to my control armature. So I'm going to expand this area here and split it. And the top one I'll make into a top sheet, action editor, and the lower one will be a nonlinear animation editor. I'll select my control rig, select one of the imported actions. And this is the crouch idle. And you can see that the arms are looking a little bit funky. And that is because my arms are currently in IK mode, whereas I animated all of these imported actions with FK arms. So I just have to go to pose mode, select one of my FK controls and switch it to FK and also enable the FK limp follow option. I explained all of these settings in the animation video. With that, I'm going to push down this action and then I'll keep selecting these actions and pushing them down to the NLA. So now I have a walk, run, jump, idle, and crouching actions for this character. I also have a special stretch action which stretches the arm. Stretching in a game engine is a common problem. So one reason I have this action is to test stretching for this character. And I'll also use it to show you some animation blending inside Unity. Okay, now that we have animations on our control rig, the only thing that's left to do is to bake these actions onto the game rig, and then everything will be ready for export. To bake these animations manually, you can activate one of these animations on the control rig, go to your game rig, pose mode, select all bones, go to pose, animation, bake action, and then use this menu to bake your actions. And I made a video about this manual baking. However, with game rig tools, we don't need to do this anymore, which is great because this manual baking process can be quite tedious. With game rig tools, I just need to go to the action bakery, select all actions that I want to bake, set my control rig and my deform rig, which is basically my game rig, click the action bakery button, and this little menu will pop up. This lets you rename your actions in the same way that Blender's patch rename works. So for example, all of the actions on my control rig have the prefix CTRL underscore. So I can rename from CTRL underscore to nothing. And that will simply remove this uh, prefix. I'll press OK. And in a few seconds, we'll have all actions baked on the game rig. And also game rig tools automatically disabled the constraints so that the game rig became independent from the control rig. And that is very important to do before you export your animations. If you don't disable the constraints, then animations won't be exported correctly. And now we are basically ready to export this character. It's important to say what is going to be exported. We are going to export the character geometry and the game rig, not the control rig. The control rig is only meant to give us nice controls to animate inside Blender. So I'm going to hide the control rig. And now we can export this skeleton and animations like this, but there is something that we can do to make the animation export cleaner. And that is to establish a default pose for the character and to rearrange the action strips in the NLA. So I'll go to frame one, create a new action for the armature, call it default or something like that. Go to pose mode, select all bones and clear all transforms. And in this state, I'm going to press I and set a location, rotation and scale keyframe and push this action down. And also, if you want to control the order in which these actions will appear inside Unity, you can arrange all actions on the same track. Like this. And make sure that the default pose is the first action on this track. And the actions will be exported in this order. You'll see that in Unity. So in object mode, I'm going to select my armature and the character and then go to file, export and choose FBX. So we are going to be using FBX to export this character. Unity can import blend files as well, but I find that gives us less control. So we are going to be using FBX. The FBX export settings are very important. Always choose selected objects. 
that will limit what will be exported to the objects that we just selected. And just for good measure, you can also click on armature and then shift select mesh. And this way, only meshes and armatures will be exported. The transform options I actually leave to default. Some people, including trusted sources such as Peeric, recommend that you set forward to positive Z instead of negative Z. But I tested this and I didn't find a difference. If something is not working, then test positive Z here. Another one is apply transform. Again, I leave it off and it works for me, but some sources say that you should enable it. On the geometry, I also leave all options to default. I tested all smoothing options and all of them seem to transfer the geometry smoothing correctly. So I'll leave them to default. On the armature, disable add leaf bones. Add leaf bones will add additional bones at the end of each bone chain and you don't need this for games. If you're using my workflow, then you can leave only the form bones unchecked. That is because our game rig is completely free of unnecessary bones, so we want to export the whole game armature. And the bake animations, disable all actions. If you use these animation options, then you'll export only the actions that we push to the NLA for the game rig. Once you find options that you're happy with, I recommend that you go to the top of the FBX options and click the plus button here and create your own preset that you can reuse. I personally have one called Game Export, and it is set up exactly as I just showed you. And now I can export my character. And to demonstrate the generic skeleton in Unity, I prepared two more characters. This dragon, I actually got it from BlendSwap, and I used it in one of my earlier videos where I was demonstrating uh, the manual workflow, but this character was set up exactly the same way. It has a control armature. I extracted a game armature based on it. Then I created animations using the control rig and then I baked these actions to the game rig. And to keep things consistent, I have the exact same seven animations, a walk, a run, a idle animation, crouching and jumping. And one special animation for the dragon is just uh, the dragon raising his wing. And the first action here that I have here is a default pose. And I can export this in the exact same way. Hide the control rig, select the game rig and the geometry, go to file, export, FBX. I'll choose my game export preset and export the dragon. And I have one more, this cheetah character, which by the way was created using an add-on that I really like. It's called Rigify and Inbox. I've demonstrated it a couple of times on the channel. And one of its newest features is this Rigify Zoo, which creates a cheetah, a cat, and a horse character. And it has predefined walk and run cycles for these characters. So I used these features, I created a walk and a run. And then based on that, I created the other animations that I use in my system, like a crouch walk, a special animation, which in this case is just raising the tail a jump, and so on. And I'm going to export this character the exact same way. Select the geometry in the game rig, export an FBX using my preset, call it Cheetah, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this character preparation video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. In the next one, we are going to move to Unity, import our models, and set them up as third-person characters. Thank you for watching, and special thanks to my patrons. If you want to join them and get some perks like early access to videos, please take a look at the video description, you'll find more information there, and I'll talk to you in the next video.